And I know, some of you wanted me to show the blending of the long and short exposures, but I will do that in another video very soon. And over there you can see yourself. Merging different exposures to an HDR image can be quite a fiddly task. In astrophotography, in most cases, it's not really necessary. Most nebulae are quite dark with very little highlights. But in some cases, for example the Orion Nebula, the Horset Nebula or the Andromeda Galaxy, combining short and long exposures to get full detail really lifts your astrophotography to the next level. If you followed my latest videos, you are probably sick of seeing the image of the Orion Nebula all the time, because I'm using that all the time. I combined two different sets of images, both independently stacked and edited. The image you see behind me over there consists of 37 times 3 minute subs and 100 times 10 second subs. There are different techniques, one more complex than the other, so I choose the easiest one. Using layer masks in Photoshop. If you want full documentation, I will leave a link down below to an article by Deep Sky Colors describing the different methods. Let's get going! Welcome back to my Photoshop. On the screen right here you can see the long exposure image of the Array Nebula. Again, this has been stacked and edited here in Photoshop. You can see it's not quite perfect, the stars over here are still quite blotchy and the background is not really that dark yet, but this is an intermediate state and I will improve on these images after I combine them. You can see the long exposure over here and this is the short 10 seconds exposure. You might think, oh god, this looks awful. And yes, it does look awful, but I didn't really edit this one a lot because I only want this part over here and stretching it even more would blur this color out again and we don't want that. You can see the background is maybe a little bit darker than the 3 minute one. I used the color sampler tool to get at least the color balance in both of these images close to each other, only that it doesn't look too drastic. Alright, here we have the long exposure. The first step, we will take the long exposure, select all and copy and paste it on top of the short one. We now have to overlap these images so that they are completely on top of each other. So I can turn the opacity down over here and you see they are not on top of each other, so I'm going into the transform tool and with the arrow keys I'm moving the upper layer to the left and let's zoom in. I think this looks alright maybe. And you can see those stars in the middle here are now stacked, but the stars on the edges should be stacked too, but they, you see quite frankly they are not. So this is due to some even though I have a field flattener, I think it's due to some spherical aberration. So by choosing this option over here, we can tilt each part of the image as we want it. And adjust this top right part over here and then the top left part. Where do we have good stars? There they are. And continue this process until every part of the image is stacked. I think this looks about right. You can also try to... I'm gonna bump up the opacity again. You can also try to... You can highlight both layers, go to edit and auto align layers. In most cases in astrophotography this doesn't work as you see. The software is not detecting enough alignment. So I had to do this this way. And now to the actual blending part. We click on the layer 1 and we want to reveal the core, the short exposure that's lying underneath. On this button you can see over here, we can create a layer mask. And with the layer mask we select a brush. I will go to the brush tool, this is too much. I will choose a very small, not that small, I will choose a small brush. The hardness all the way down to zero, so we have very smooth and fine edges. And most importantly, even the opacity of this brush, even more down, maybe to 40%. Let's try, let's try something like that. By choosing the colors black or white, you can either conceal or reveal parts of the image. To try this out, which one is which, I will just... Okay, as you can see, 
the color black reveals the layer underneath. And I think this looks about right. No. If we had the opacity at 100%, you can see this is not exactly what we want. I like to edit these images. The Orion Nebula is a very bright object and the brightness of it really shines, if you can say it like that. I think the brightness is a very important part of this object, so I like to keep the core very bright, but you have you should see some detail in there, otherwise it's it's just the outer nebulosity and nothing in the middle, so, so no fun with that. I will bump the opacity down to one third, and just by clicking on here I will reveal... I even think that this is too much. Yeah, that's definitely too much. Let me go back. I will choose a larger brush and bump the opacity down even more. So we will have to do a lot of clicks until this gets any darker. If we now take away the bottom layer, you can see the parts we have raised. The middle part completely gone already and the other parts just some percentage of it. So I will click a few more times on the core to get it even to get it even darker. And you can see slight variations in colors already. If I want to get this really perfectly done, I'd have to go back to the short exposure over here and tweak the colors, but in the, for the purpose of this tutorial, I think I'm not going to do that right now because I only wanted to show the blending. So I think we can also... Now it looks like an eye. No, let's not do that. So I think I will conceal with X. You can swap the colors. I think I will conceal some of this again over here. I don't want this false color to go much places. I think I will also take away some of these parts over here. And of course more of the trapezium in the middle. You can, if, if I zoom in very closely, you can already see the trapezium over there. One, two, three, four different stars. That's amazing. All right, I think. Maybe go here a little bit more to blur out the details. No, that was too much. You can see you can really spend a lot of time mastering this. If this was the first time I made this image, I of course would spend a lot more time with the color correction in here. I can show you the way that I've uh, processed the image after this step. And here is the version I did previously, the version I published on Instagram, YouTube, etc. And on the bottom layer you can see the HDR. This is the image I combined. You can see more detail in the core, but still very bright. I like that very much. The steps I did afterwards. I reduced some stars. I hope you can see it in the recording. I don't think so. Some star reduction, local contrast enhancement, which really pulls out details of the nebulosity in this part. You can, maybe you can zoom in, you can see that. And the next step I did, I used the action called increase star color, which gave the center of the nebula this almost glowing yellow tone, which I liked really much. And then some curves adjustments, levels adjustments, some sharpening. And this is the final image I uploaded to Instagram and YouTube. The bad weather situation did not improve since the last video. So I'm stuck in here to contemplate my existence and the math exam for physicists next Friday. But if I get out soon again, I'm sure this will help. This is the first dry narrowband filter I've ever laid my eyes on. I haven't seen any review videos or images from anyone out there yet. So I'm very excited what this will give as a result. Next target should be the Whirlpool Galaxy. Maybe I can... The forecast is all over the place, it's, it's, there's a saying here in Germany, April does what it wants, and it's not even April, and it already does what it wants. 
So until then, may the night be with us.